Hello everyone, you are on a pick of the week that has specific selection of interesting, sometimes challenging problems. So welcome back, and this is A level pure one. So that's uh, sort of not really hard paper, but it's interesting to go through because that's exam style questions, and it's, it's going to be fresh. It's all about polynomials, it's 2020, and let's get started. All right, so here's the problem. So pause the video. Here are two questions, and here are the rest part of the problem. So try to pause the video, try to do better wrong as always, and let's see my explanations. All right, so you're given definitely cubic polynomial. So I'm pretty sure that you know the rules, how it looks like, but later on I'll show you how to work with this sort of polynomials in order to at least recognize the general behavior of the graph. All right, but the first question is much um, easier than everyone expected. So you need to prove that x minus 3 is the factor of fx. So what it means? It means that uh, if you say that x is going to be 3, so from the knowledge that your factor is 0, that's a factor theorem, right, about polynomials, your polynomial, your function f from 3 should give you 0, okay? Because when, obviously if x minus 3 is the factor of fx, it means you need to times another quadratic polynomial, say here is quadratic 1, quadratic the rest part, and that's going to be fx. Obviously, when x is 3, fx is 0. So that's why this uh, theorem tells exactly this stuff. And that means we just need to check. All right, so just plug in and let's show that this is the result is going to be 0. All right, so we have 2 times 3 cubed minus 11 times 9 plus 12 times 3 again and plus 9 finally. Okay, so we just want to check this and if you calculate obviously you'll get the result to be zero okay so that means we prove that and hence using algebra show that the equation of x has only two distinct roots all right so normally for p3 because right now we have your function as the cubic polynomial so that means in general uh, cubic polynomials should have obviously three solutions but sometimes solution if it does exist uh, they might be coinciding it means x1 might be equal to x2 for example all right so we need to show that there are two distinct roots okay how to do that because x minus 3 is one of the factor so we can use this catch or pattern and we say that because x minus 3 is one of the factor so the rest part, the rest uh, factor, is going to be quadratic expression. Because I know that leading coefficient 2, so I would use uh, the following structure for quadratic general form, bx and plus c. Okay, so that's definitely ensured that we have 2, but multiplying by x, we'll get 2x cubed, so that's okay. And that means we know a coefficient of the quadratic rest part, but we need to find out b value and c value as the coefficients. All right, so let's work it out. Uh, I would use the method of comparison. So what it means, if I start multiplying, start expanding the brackets, but I'm not going to do it completely. I'll, do, I'll show you the short card, okay? Uh, your p3 in this form should be equal to actually your function fx. So that means I will start by expanding, uh, I will start from minus 3 multiplying by c in order to get free coefficient which is 9, obviously, right? We can compare. And that means negative 3c during expansion should be equal to 9. From there, I can conclude that c is negative 3. So I've established the value for c. Now we need to figure out b. So b is the coefficient before x. 
um, so what I can do, I start. I will start expanding uh, so that we will have x terms, and the result should be equal, obviously, to twelve x. Okay, so uh, where I can get the coefficient before x? When I x multiply by c value, in our case c is three, so I will get negative three x. That's the first expansion, and the rest part is negative three multiplied by bx. So I'll get negative three bx, and in total we should it should be the same as 12x term, okay? This is term by term comparison. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to simplify, and from here I'll get negative 3b equals to 15. And from where I can figure out value for b, which is negative 5. Okay, so I work out this, I work out this, and that means... The rest part that we have right here, I'll just highlight in this way and just squeeze a little bit, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to say that the general quadratic rest part will have the form 2x squared minus 5x and minus 3. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to solve quadratic equation in order to find x. All right, so let's do that. Uh, I'll bet that's x, so it's mi uh, minus minus b, so minus b. Uh, it's going to be 5 plus minus square root of 25 plus 4 times 3, 12, and times 2 is going to be 20, 24, yeah? So 2... For uh, it's 12, yeah, 24. Okay, so we have good number over 4. So that means we have x12, 5 plus minus 24, and 25 is going to be 49, so 7 here and over 4. All right, so the first root, the first root here, x1, is going to be 5 plus 7 is 12, 12 over 4 is 3, and the second root, x2, is going to be 5 minus n minus 1 over 2, finally. Okay, so that means our final P3 will have the following form. It's going to be x minus 3, and here is going to be 2 times, so it means uh, we'll get 2x plus 1, n times again x minus 3. Obviously, so because we found, uh, we solved the second part and we've got again x equals 3 that we had before. So obviously this is repeating, uh, the repeating solution. And finally, because we need to find two distinct roots. So from there we can conclude that x, uh, let's say 1 and 3 equals, which is that one. So this going to be x3 uh, is going to be equal to 3 and another distant root is going to be x2 equals to negative 1 over 2. Okay so there are two distant roots and we can move next. So we have this equation equals to 0 and hold on we have pretty the same structure for fx. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to repeat all terms. So that we have a real comparison. So, to, for easiness of comparison to equations. And what you can notice, so you know that you need to deduce, given reasons for your answer, the number of real solutions, real roots of the equation. So, what I can do, uh, I can say that this is our function fx. And this, let's mark this expression as g from x. And we need to solve basically g from x equals to 0. What's the difference? The difference is that g from x is simply f from x plus 1. So if you consider in terms of function. Okay, because you found for fx, there are two uh, distinct roots and one is repeating 
And also, that's the cubic polynomial. So I would recommend to consider the general way how we can plot f from x. So that's going to be, obviously, negative 1 over 2. So that's going to be 3. But this is a repeating number, so that's why it's a point of the turning point. In other words, x1 is 3. And another x2 is negative 1 over 2. So what we can say if we just compare with our g function. So g function is function fx vertically translated by one unit up. So we need just to deduce the number of real roots of this equation. Because this function is transferred basically one unit up. And why it goes in this way? Because obviously leading coefficient, which in our case is 2, it's here. So and for fx is also 2, of course. Yes. So we have the general behavior like this. Okay. So that's for uh, a's leading coefficients to be positive. If it were negative, so we would have another way around, just go on the way back. Okay, but we have this sketch. It can be actually proved without sketch, but I just want to visualize so that you clearly understand what's happening during translation. All right, so we just need to leave tau by one unit. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I just use this color in order to lift it up. So instead of this maximum, it's gonna be just plus one unit up. Instead of this, it's gonna be plus one unit up. And in other words, we will have something like this. So this is a G function. So it's gonna be simply like that. So this is G from X. And that means that right now we have only one point of intersection. I just highlight this point. It's already here. And this is X intercept. Because there was only uh, there was only x equals 3 delivering you one solution by during the shift plus one unit up. It doesn't um, it doesn't so it doesn't represent x intercept. Now you have nothing here. Basically you have a single x intercept. So that means we can assume not assume we actually proved that g from x equals zero will have one solution. And if you're asked to estimate like around, so you can say that it's going to be somewhere uh, just below negative 1 over 2, but I bet it's within actually negative 3. So you can have even an estimation. All right, so hope you understand that. And next, the last question, given that k is the constant and curve with the equation fx plus k pass through the origin, find the two possible values of k. So now we have our function fx, but new argument x plus k. So what it means? It means that right now, just coming back to what we have here, uh, it's just simply shaped by k units, but where? Uh, so normally k should be negative in this case, yes? And also might be positive, so it was shaped by k units so, so that this point uh, becomes a point of uh, x-intercept in the origin because you are said that the graph should, uh, the curve pass through the origin, okay? So that's one possible value of k and it should be negative due to the rules of translations. And now the k value when it starts shifting to the left. And that means this point exactly will pass or cross. Uh, so actually touch. <laughs> yes, in this case it's more it's uh, more correctly to say that it touches the origin. Okay, but this is just visualizing how to do algebraically. So obviously you know that there are two possible values, so I explain how it's possible. Now it's pretty easy. So it passed through the origin. So what it means it means that when x plus k is 0, y also should be 0. And now what we're going to do, instead of 
instead of x, we need to put the value, uh, first of all, x plus k, and the result for this is going to be uh, 0. So what it means? So that means we need to shift our graph by 1 over 2 units in the positive direction in order to this point to be exactly that point of a new graph that passes through the origin. Because actually we know the distance, right? So this distance is 1 over 2. So that means we need to shift our graph to the right by 1 over 2. In terms of translation, that means that the function y, if the previous function but from new argument x minus 1 over 2. And because we have the pattern x plus k, obviously k is negative 1 over 2. Okay, that will represent the shift to the right by 1 over 2 units. Okay, so what about the other value? So obviously another way that we can reach this case is to shift by three units to the left. So minus three units to the left, because obviously this point should be now cross uh, the point of the graph crossing the origin. So that means we have the shift by three units to the left, and that means another case represented this situation, uh, shifting horizontal translation by negative three units to the left, it means that our function should be from new argument x plus 3. In this case, k is going to be equal to 3. All right, so we've got both values, and that's the solution. How to find k? Just imagine the graph. That's the easiest way, I think. And I hope you like that. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. That was Daniel Dallas. See you next time.